In this segment, I'm going to talk about the functionalities in Idea and Mason that help you with your flow. So last time I talked about how it helps you to be organized, and it does a great, great job of that. Um, I reconfigured the, the window layout, and I mentioned that for some people this would be busy. If you want to, you don't have to divide them up into all these different segments. You can just leave them all tabbed across. But I'm going to go ahead and um, move this material item up here the way I do with my normal portfolio. This is just a mock portfolio I'm using for this review. And I'm going to save that layout. Okay, so now on to the things that help with flow. So your materials that you have, you can break them down as much as you want. So you can break things down into paragraphs. You can break things down into sentences if you want to. The neat thing about breaking them down into paragraphs is when it comes time to edit and revise, if you've broken things down by paragraph, you can print them paragraph by paragraph out on a piece of paper and you can tack it up on the wall and just move things around. Um, that's one really neat thing about it. So let's take a peek at how editing flows just really nicely between Idea Mason and Word. Alright, so oops. Let's open up that mock composition again. And these items we talked about before, the difference between outline elements. Okay, so this paragraph here. I have a note that's telling me what this paragraph is going to be about, and then I created the material for it, and there it is. So paragraph number one will be about blah, blah, blah. Hi, I'm paragraph number one. I make a point, so and so and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I want to edit this, and I'm just feeling like it's kind of lost in the mix of the whole thing, then I can click here, and there we go. It allows me to isolate it and edit it. Another thing I can do is say that I want to change the order. Say I am thinking, you know what, there's paragraph one, and there's paragraph two. I think I might want to change the order. Easily done. Just highlight it, push control and the up arrow, and now things have changed their order. All right, so paragraph two will be about, paragraph one will be about. So if I, I was in the material editor, so now I'm not highlighting any material, actual prose for the composition, so it's gone. But if you'll notice, the order hasn't changed. You're going to have to do a refresh. So if I do this refresh, then now the paragraph's order has changed, and I can just easily kind of see there, hmm, do I like that new order? No, I don't like the way it sounds. So fine, easy to change. Just highlight paragraph two, click Control, and move it down again. And now we're back. <laughs> we're going to click Refresh so that that change takes place. And now we're back in the order we were before. Paragraph 1 is there. Paragraph 2 is there. That helps with your flow so much. So here's another thing about your flow. Um, if you want to, you can take this paragraph, open it up, and just print it only. So you go to your item, and you export it to Word. It'll print just only that. That's nice. And we talked before about how you can do your versioning and give it status and change the material types and all of that in your uh, citations, how easily you've done that is. All right, so another thing that helps with your flow is the preview. So let's go back to the workspace. And for all my materials, if I click on this preview tab down here, I can see them. So I click on this figure, and I can preview it. I can see it. I can scroll, and I can look. It tells me how many uh, words are involved. It'll tell me where it's cited. Where have I referenced this? So here is a preview of the figure I teach. This is what it looks like. The words, 10 words, and it is in the mock composition composition. That's helpful. That helps with your flow an awful lot. Another thing to help you with your flow is your to-do list. So again, the, the deal with Idea Mason, the only issue that I have, well, there's two, and I'll get to the other one in a moment, is that you have to refresh. And I talked to the developers, and they said not every operating system has you to refresh, but some do, and mine does. So this is all the to-do items I have, and you can label them by activity, by you know, and you can control what that is by priority, and um, click them off, and so forth. Just your normal to-do list. We, the category manager, I talked about that a little bit. You can make categories however you want to. When you label things by category, if you go over here, it'll populate it into the folders automatically so that you can find things.
Another really great thing that just surprised me about how amazing this feature has been for me is that you can create these reminders, but there's oh so much more than reminders. So um, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to say um, new reminder for demo uh, uh, review or whatever. Okay, so then I'm going to say here is some new stuff I'm typing. Blah. Blah. Okay, so I saved that. So it's not just a reminder that's here. You can resize this thing, which is really nice, however you like. The great thing about it is that this, you can just do so much with it. So if I decide I'm going to go over here and open up Adobe, my PDF reader, then I can copy and paste from here if I want to. So I grab this, copy, and it's there. And the nice thing about this is once I go back to Idea Mason and go back to my composition, it just sticks there. So if I want to copy and paste from there to there, I can. Or if I go to the Internet, then it sticks there, and I can copy and paste from the Internet. Um, if I click on Word, then it sticks there. I can't just put into words how useful that is. It's surprising how, how well, how easily that it makes your flow go when you're able to just have a window that just sticks and you can do whatever you like. And like I said, you can resize it. Alright, so that's one thing about the sticky, but then it gets even better. And I'm just astonished at how much I like the sticky note. It's kind of it's kind of silly, but it, it's not at the same time. Alright, so I'm here and let me see, let me do a refresh and make sure that I have my reminder sticky there. All right, are we here? Where's my sticky? Uh, what did I name it? <laughs> oh, I can't remember what I named that sticky. Where is it? Oh, there it is. New reminder for demo. All right, so another thing you can do is you can take it, you can grab it, and you can drag it into your composition. So I'm going to take it and put it there. Um, and I'll put it there, and I'll change the order. So when you do that, it's not a material item itself, so it's going to be red. And what that means is that if you export this document, you don't have to export the sticky, but it's there. So let's take a peek. New reminder. All right, there you are. This is that sticky. It's in red, and it'll you know can you can make a sticky note to yourself about what to do about a paragraph or what to do about a section, and just drag it and drop it right above it. And then when you go to material, you'll notice that it's not there because it's not a material item. It's not a major part of your composition. It's just a note. If I come here, there it is. So that's a really a nice, nice feature. When you're rooting around and you're getting ideas about things on the web or whatever, you can create your sticky and then drag it and drop it to the part where, that you need to. So those are some of the things that really, really help the flow.